Hey there everybody, Skosh here with a very interesting video for today because it's actually a sort of topic discussion video and it's been a while since I've done one of these so it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. So basically the other day Katsuhiro Harada who is obviously you know the face of the Tekken team, he's one of the most well known people in the FGC, he uh, got a question from somebody on Twitter that was basically asking if we could get Mokujin playable in Tekken 8. So after responding to this question, Harada put up a poll on his personal Twitter page that was basically just asking Mokujin question mark and the two options that people could choose from were yes please and not a priority. While we don't know like officially what this poll is about, I think given you know the question that was being asked in the first place and the options in the poll, I think it's fairly obvious and I think it's fairly safe to assume that this is a poll that's being done to gauge interest in a playable Mokujin at some point in Tekken 8. So just kind of be like completely upfront about this, I'm like massively biased about this topic because I love Mokujin, he's easily one of my favourite Tekken characters, I have wanted him back for a long time now. So him coming back in Tekken 8, you know, honestly would be a dream come true for me, like I really really hope it happens. But this whole thing has kind of seemed to spark a debate, not a massive debate, but it's one I've still seen online on like Twitter and Reddit and places, and uh, obviously... I don't think it's a debate of like, oh, is Mokujin worth coming back or not? I think he's absolutely worth coming back. Although I have seen people who seem to be very dismissive of him as a character, you know, as of his status as a mimic character. I'll kind of explain what that is in a minute for those that don't know. I mean, if you want to debate if Mokujin is a character that's worth coming back, then that's up to you. But I mean, all you need to do is look at the 74.2% of the 56,000 people who voted in this poll who said that they wanted Mokujin back. So I think it's a very silly discussion to have. But yeah, the main debate I want to have here is say yes, Mokujin is 100% worth coming back as a DLC character and that in this ideal world, Bandai Namco and the Tekken team are intending to make him a playable DLC character at some point in the future. The actual debate that I feel comes from this is should Mokujin be a free DLC character or should he be a normal paid for DLC character? So before we get into this whole, you know, DLC debate, I just want to kind of give a brief rundown of Mokujin as a character for those that either don't know or don't remember who he is. So Mokujin is a character that debuted in Tekken 3 and he is a wooden training dummy carved from the wood of a 2000 year old oak tree. And his reason for entering all these tournaments is that every time a kind of big threat affects the world, say Ogre or Azazel, the spirits that once inhabited the oak tree uh, bring him back to life and basically send him out on a mission to destroy the evil that is affecting the world before it destroys everything. In terms of gameplay, Mokujin is a Mimic character and he always has been, and for those that don't know what that is, a Mimic character is somebody that just uses the fighting styles of other characters in the roster and they don't have their own unique fighting style or moves of their own. So in the case of Mokujin, he will actually rotate between different characters' movesets every round. So for one round, you'll play, say, as Jin, and then the next round you could be playing as King or Heihachi or, you know, Jack or whoever. So that's how Mokujin has always worked and I really don't see that changing anytime soon. I mean we have enough characters really with their own moves. I think Mokujin being a Mimic character is his thing. It's one of the things he's most memorable for. So yeah I don't really think that needs to be anything that needs to be debated about oh should they make him his own character or anything. I think yeah absolutely keep him a Mimic because I think he fits that role well. The issue with him being a Mimic character though is that it basically has led to a lot of people feeling that Mokujin as a character is just not really worth the addition. And obviously I've just said before, you know, like this isn't about his worth as a character or anything like that. Obviously people love Mokujin, he is probably one of the most memorable characters in the Tekken roster. So the debate isn't about that, but at the same time it's a part of it because that feeling of not being worth it has led to this whole thing of, you know, Mokujin should be a free DLC character if he should ever return, you know, in this era of fighting games that we live in now where basically you get your characters at launch and then every other character that's added to the game is added post-release. Like we don't get the day one roster and then that's it like those days are long gone now it is what it is that obviously this, this debate isn't about that either so you know i'm not going to get into that fully but you know there was a reason why mokujin wasn't in tekken 7 and you know i think most people assume myself included that it was because it feels like a bit of a hard sell to tell people hey pay money for this character that doesn't have their own moves doesn't have their own fighting style that just uses from other characters that you have no control over you know which character's fighting style you're going to use like for all intents and purposes mokujin is a very advanced character that requires you know vast knowledge of every character in the roster i mean obviously people have their mains and people will never 
you know, touch certain characters with a ten foot pole. You know, like there'll be no desire. Like I, I main Jin. I'm never gonna touch Feng. You know that type of stuff. So a character like Mocha Jin that requires you to know both characters. You know, at least to a lot of people, not really bothering with that because it's a lot of work and it's a lot of knowledge you need to have about the game. Of course, there is also the belief that if you add Mocha Jin as a playable character, then that slot basically is taken away from somebody else who is arguably more deserving of it. You know, somebody who has their own fighting style, their own moves. Like, say, for example, you add Mocha Jin instead of Eddie Gordo, then you have no Capoeira fighter, which is, you know, a big deal in Tekken. There's always been a Capo fighter in every game since 3. So in that sense, yes, I do understand why some people would be very adverse to Mokujin making it in the game, which is why this whole free DLC character debate is a thing, because people would feel like then that it's worth it, because it's not taking away from anything, it's not something they have to pay money for, it's not something that they owe, you know, it's it's something that is just given to them free, and they can accept it if they want, they can use Mokujin if they want, it's entirely there for them to use or to not use. So you're probably thinking at this point, well the answer's obvious then, you just make Mokujin free, everybody wins. Fans of the character get that character for free, and the people who don't care for the character, they don't have to pay anything for it. And I mean yes, in an ideal world, that would be the outcome, everybody's happy, everybody wins. Unfortunately though, I think what most people in this situation don't really think about is that there would be one party involved in this whole thing that wouldn't win, like, theoretically. And that's Bandai Namco and the Tekken team. Like, believe it or not, fighting game characters take a long time to make. I think it was the Street Fighter 6 developers who said that from like conceptualization to finalization, it takes about a year to make one of their characters. And in that year, you're spending a lot of time, money, resources, and manpower making that character work, developing everything you need, to, like all their animations, all their hitboxes, all their frames, and it's a lot of work. But I feel like this narrative is starting to be spun for Mokujin, where there is a very strong belief that, you know, Mokujin doesn't take nearly as much work as a normal character would do. He doesn't have his own fighting style, he doesn't have his own moves, he just uses everybody else's. So, you know, you could just copy and paste the movesets into Mokujin and bam, wham, it's done. And I mean, yeah, I won't deny, you would need to do less work for Mokujin to make him work in the game. There's no need to plan out a moveset, there's no need to, you know, record motion capture like we've seen, you know, in the Eddie Gordo trailer for the Tekken 8 DLC. There would theoretically be no need to do any of that because, you know, it was already done for the characters that were already in the game playable. But of course, that's not to say that Mokujin requires no development time at all. What I believe people tend to overlook or not think about is that you still got to do a lot of work for Mokujin. Yes, granted, you're not making any new moves from scratch, but Mokujin has always had the same body type, and, you know, he's never changed the body to fit the fighting style. I mean, as cool as it sounds to have a jack-sized Mokujin, I, that's just, that's never what they've done, and I don't see them changing that anytime soon. So using Jack as an example, for Jack 8 in Tekken 8, you would need to readjust every hitbox of Jack 8 to apply to Mokujin's body. Because if you just had Jack 8's hitboxes and, you know, his reach, but on the normal body of Mokujin, like, that would just break the game, because, you know, Mokujin would just be standing there, like, six feet away from you, and he would just do a normal punch, and you would get hit, like, he would punch the air, and you would fly across the screen because he's normal-sized Mokujin with the reach of, you know, big Jack-8. You know, so it's like, it, it, it just doesn't work. You need to go to Mokujin and you need to readjust every, you know, frame of animation. You need to readjust every hitbox, every, you know, little detail that goes into making both characters work. And yes, while in the long run that is less work than you would need to do to make Jack-8 normally, at the same time, when you think about it, you've got to do that for every character in the roster. You've got to do it for Jin's moveset, for Huarang's moveset, for Xiao Yu's moveset, for Kuma's, for Panda's. And you know, Tekken 8 has like 32 characters in that roster, and obviously that's not including DLC. Like, if you do Mokujin, like, Mokujin is a commitment. Because every time you do a DLC character, you've got to go back and you've got to update Mokujin. And it was easier back in the day when there wasn't, you know, DLC characters, or if there were, they were done in an update at once. You know, take Mokujin's last appearance, which was in Tekken 6, and obviously when that game came out, you had a fixed roster, like, that was it. The only characters you got later were in Bloodline Rebellion, which was the console version. And if my memory's right, I think Lars and Alyssa were the only characters added in that version, so, you know, like, you've only got to adjust him for two more characters. And I mean, looking at how many DLC characters Tekken 7 ended up having, like I said, it's a commitment. You've got to keep going back to Mokujin every time and updating the movesets, updating the animations, updating the hitboxes, the frames. It's not easy work. 
So of course, this is where I feel the debate comes in, because is it fair for Bandai Namco to take a loss on whatever money, resources, time and manpower they spend on making Mokujin just because people think Mimic characters should be free because they have essentially convinced themselves that Mimic characters take less time and money to make and therefore are not as worth it as an actual normal character. Now, don't get me wrong here, I don't want to be the person that capes for the big corporation. Of course, as a consumer myself, I think if anybody should be losing out here, it should be a company like Bandai Namco, because I think that they can afford to take a loss on something like Mokujin. And I mean, if they gained some goodwill from the community by releasing a well-liked character for free, uh, did they really lose anything? So yeah, ultimately, I do think that they should release Mokujin for free if it comes to it. But basically, my point is that I don't think it's as clear-cut as some people assume it to be. Naturally, I think there's some ways that they can get around it so that, you know, they at least get something out of it. They could make the season a five character season and just throw in Mokujin. They could, I don't know, they could do what Street Fighter V did maybe and just throw in Eleven as part of the season pass for free. Like, you have to buy the season pass to get that character. Obviously, speaking of Eleven, like, that's a good example of a company doing a character like Mokujin and just doing them for free and that working out fine. My only issue with that, though, is that, and I don't mean any disrespect to the Tekken team or Bandai Namco, but I feel like out of all the major fighting game developers, they are probably, in my opinion, the least likely to do a free DLC character. Obviously, you know, we've had free DLC characters in the past for quite a few games recently. SNK in The King of Fighters 15, you know, has been absolutely killing it in that regard. Like, really popular characters they've been just releasing totally for free. I mean, SNK would have made an absolute fortune off of selling Rugal, but they just updated the game and gave us them for free. So, you know, at the end of the day, I think it would be worth it for Bandai Namco to kind of show to everybody that, hey, you know, we can give some goodwill out. We can, you know, do this one thing for free as a generosity for our community. And I think people would be accepting of that. And I think they would be happy with that. Even if people don't think a mimic character is worth it or is a waste of development time or resources. I think honestly, like I said earlier, given the 74.2% of people that would still want Mokujin regardless of that, I think there's something to be done here where everybody wins. I would love to hear your thoughts on this though, so please feel free to comment below your opinions on this. Do you think Mokujin and Mimic characters as a whole are a complete waste of time? Do you think he should be free regardless of whatever the development time or cost is? Do you think Bandai Namco would be justified in selling him for money? I'm absolutely open to hearing what people think about this. I think this is a topic, like I said, I'm very interested in, I'm heavily biased about. So yeah, I would just love to see what people think about this. I would love to, you know, get the different facets of the community and see what they think about it, how casual Tekken fans would think about it, how, you know, people who've never played Mokujin, who've never seen him in a Tekken game. You know, how would you think about this character being, you know, DLC either for free or paid or otherwise? For me, I just hope something comes from this. I mean, like I said earlier in the video, I love Mokujin to death. He's always just been such a core part of Tekken for me. I mean, just ever since I was a kid, I have loved the concept. I have loved the design. I have loved, you know, his mannerisms. I love his goofy endings. He's just such a fun character to me. And like, he's up there with like the bears and the Mishimas and, you know, the Yoshimitsus and the boxing kangaroos in terms of just like, this is what Tekken is. You know, like, this is what Tekken is about. It's about all this goofy stuff that's just so endearing, so fun to see. So yeah, I hope this poll like leads somewhere I hope this isn't just Harada just kind of like doing a thing willy-nilly and just kind of like, oh, I'll see what Mokujin wants. If people want Mokujin, okay, well, yeah, like the majority wants it. Oh, I'm not going to do that anyway. But yeah, I would just love him in the game so much. He's probably my most wanted character in all honesty, but I think closely followed afterwards by Armor King. So, you know, if I ever got them two in the game, like I would honestly be set for life. I would be so happy. I would never ask for any other character in Tekken 8. But yeah, I'm going to leave things here. Hopefully, you know, this this topic video went well and you feel like, you know, there's an actual discussion to be had here. But I was seeing a lot of comments about it. And obviously, I talked, you know, very briefly earlier about the people who just dismissed Mokujin as a whole. And I don't really want to talk about that. I think, you know, I hate that type of topic of like, oh, I don't like this character. Therefore, they should never come back. Like, fuck that, man. Like, I think every character has some fans out there who want them to return. But I think this topic about the free or DLC, I think, you know, I think that's a very interesting topic because I think, you know, be interesting to see how Bandai Namco go about it. Because as much as I think making him free would be a better option for everybody, at the end of the day, like, it is Bandai Namco and, you know... Obviously not to be mean or to kind of burn any bridges. I mean, not like I had bridges to burn with them anyway. But yeah, I do think they are probably like the least likely out of all the big companies at the moment to do a free character like that. But I hope I'm wrong. Uh, you know, I hope something comes out of this. I, I mean, day one, regardless, I'm paying for Mo I, I I would pay money for Mokujin. Like, it's not even a question for me. Like, I would so, in a heartbeat, drop money to get him in the game. But that's because I'm a fan of the character. And, you know, I don't know if it's really fair for other characters or other people to miss out for a character they don't really care for. But yeah, I'll leave things here. Thank you all for watching. Like I said, please comment below your opinions on this. I would love to see what other people think about this. But yeah, for now, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you for watching, and I shall see you later. Goodbye.
await your return, warrior.